Hi guys. So today's video is going to be a book chat on Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. This is a book chat, not a book review, so the majority of what I'm going to be talking about is spoilers, but if you are interested in seeing a non-spoiler review of the first one, Strange Dreamer, I'll have that linked down below. So at the very beginning of this one, it definitely picks up right where the first one left off. It would have been kind of weird if it didn't because of the way the first one ended, which I was definitely really happy about because something that I weirdly enjoyed about the first one was how much I hated Minya. Like I don't enjoy Minya but Lainey Taylor did a fantastic job in the first one of just making me hate that little girl. But she's just so bitter and rotten. And in that first one, she could have let the story end. She could have been the hero because Lazo discovers he has the ability to tweak and maneuver Misarthium. And then Sarai dies and it's really tragic, but then, you know, you're like, oh shoot, Minya, Minya can just save her ghost and everything will be fine. Except you're like, but wait, it's Minya and she is awful. But I was really happy to see that this second one picked up right there so that we could enjoy Minya's terribleness some more. I was a little confused though as to what exactly this book, what the plot was gonna be because at the root of it I was thinking, well, either they convince Minya to stop being a tiny B word or they don't and she lets Sarai die and then Laszlo's devastated. So it was one or the other. I was like, what exactly is the is the plot of this book going to be? And I did not expect such a heavy part of the plot to be Nova's story. Nova's story was so sad. Her life was devastating. Her sister's life was devastating. And I felt for them so much. I just, her, I kept thinking, you know, when she was going to get sold and be married off to that old guy, I was like, well, she'll kill him, right? And then she did it. And she's stuck with this terrible stepmother and her father just thinks she's basically worth a handful of coins. She's got this nasty old man husband. And I was like, my goodness. And every time she'd go to the sea and just think about, oh, well, I have the option of killing myself. I was like, ugh, oh, you poor thing. Her perseverance through all of that and her constant hope that someday she would go and find her sister. It was so sad, but you're like, wow, you're an amazing character. You're pushing through all of this turmoil and angst in your life so that you can someday try to help your sister. It's not even a matter of she wants to get back to her sister for herself, but turning into I need to help her even though she's going through all these terrible things. However, I sort of didn't care. It was a great story, but for a long time, I did care in the end, but for a long time I was like, but what about Laszlo? I was just not anticipating any of that. And it it's weird because initially I was like, I don't know if I like this because it's not that I have to know what's going to happen and have to be able to predict it, but it was so out there and it got almost science fiction-y and just really trippy and I wasn't expecting it. So I, I had mixed feelings about it initially. I knew that they would tie together at some point, but I thought that Nova's story was kind of setting up for the things that had occurred in Weep. I didn't realize all of a sudden she was gonna bust through when they find that little, shoot, what is it called? The little like warp in the worlds and she just busts through and then she's like, I'm here to kill that dude who looks like Scathis. And my first instinct in books, whenever somebody comes and Fs everything up for all the characters I love, I'm like, can we just kill them now? Can we just kill them? <laughs> like, it's weird that I hate Minya so much because that was kind of Minya's reaction of like, let's just kill this girl. Something that I think is a huge takeaway from the story and that I value about this story and appreciate so much is that a theme in these books seems to be that it doesn't always have to come to violence and sometimes it's just a matter of figuring out who the person is in their core and finding the root of all of their sadness and their bitterness and their anger and Sarai, the way she does that through through Nova's nightmare of seeing all these people she's killed and just this endless track to her sister, the way she goes to, to her and helps her heal, it was very, very beautiful. But I was so sad. I was so sad when Nova comes to and she wakes up and she kind of sets everybody free of that time loop and then starts walking out. I'm like, no, don't do it. I knew she was gonna do it. All those hints at her killing herself in the ocean and stuff. I was like, no, and I almost cried. It was so sad when she did that, but in a weird way, like you were sort of happy that she finally had her peace, but she sort of did it. I mean, she just had the most tragic life and she had that moment with her sister in the end, but man, that part was devastating. Speaking of time loops and devastating, when Nova had Errol Fane and his wife in that time loop over and over and over again dying, 
I was furious. One, because that's a terrible, terrible thing to do. Two, because they just have a really tragic love story of their own. And then three, because his mom is right there and his daughter that he finally gets to meet in a somewhat peaceful way. And they're sitting there watching him get murdered over and over and over again. Errol Fane is one of those characters that I sort of wish I didn't feel so much for, but I felt for him so much. I really love his character, except for I hate that I love his character because I have so much sympathy for him having been taken from his wife and then later his wife being taken and having his mind essentially controlled, his emotions controlled at least and he went through so much and it was so awful and then and then he kills kids though he kills kids and i'm just like Ugh. i don't know if all of you did this but i sort of had to twist it in my mind as his his mind was so broken by what sarai's mother is the goal did to him that I'm like, well, he wasn't in his right mind, so he wouldn't have actually done that. I have to like twist it because I, there's a part of me that was so happy with the ending where him and his wife got to start over and they got to have a life together and they got to have a child and they named it Lazo and it was so sweet. But at the same time, I'm like, but you, you killed, you killed babies. Also, can we all agree that Suhaila, is that how you say it, his mother, is the best? Like I know everybody calls Laszlo a cinnamon roll, but I just think she is just amazing and I feel like having her present in this book even though she's not a hugely significant part of the book having her present in this book makes me realize how I want way more grandma figures in stories because she was just wonderful I love that she chose to stick around with the godspawn and be that parental or grandmotherly figure to them in the end especially with Minya because Minya needed that Minya really really needed that and that brings me full loop back around to Minya. I've said before how much I hated Minya and Strange the Dreamer and people are like, you're gonna feel for her in the second one, you're just gonna wanna give her a hug. And weirdly enough, sort of, but the thing is the Minya that we got in the first one, it wasn't all of who she was because when you find out in this one that her, her personality has been shattered, who she is has been shattered into fragments. And so the Minya that we see in Minya's body is the bitter, angry version and then her more soothing and nurturing nature is is personified in the Ellens. And so weirdly, I didn't change my mind about how Minya was in the first one. It's just, we got to see Minya put back together. I really, really loved that moment when Nova was attacking all of them and Laszlo came to Minya and protected her. And she's thinking to herself that it was only for Sarai, but, but deep down it's like she's never had somebody hold her like that and try to protect her so fiercely. And I love that her and Laszlo are technically siblings. That made me really happy and that Laszlo got a brother in the end too. It's just, I really, I really, really loved as tragic as Nova's ending was, I loved the ending in every way of this book. While I was reading it, I really wasn't sure I was gonna like it. It just took such a different direction than I was expecting and I, a lot of the times was like, can we get back to Laszlo and gang? Like I always wanted to go back to them, but the way everything tied together was so well done and I just, the ending, it, the whole last chunk, I just thought was done phenomenally. I also really liked that Sarai and Laszlo always stayed true to their characters, even when he was faced with the option of potentially hurting Minya in order to get her to bring Sarai back. He didn't do it. And I just think that that was fantastic and amazing and remarkable because my instinct was like, shoot, just start like, I don't know, do so. I was thinking like really terrible morbid thoughts, like, come on. And then he didn't. He didn't do it and I thought that that was fitting though because that would have kind of not not been our Laszlo. I will say that in books, I always appreciate when any kind of romantic uh, physical actions are shown more through an emotional lens rather than the pure physical lens because we all get how stuff works and I appreciate that that's how it was in this book that when anytime Sarai and Laszlo had moments together where they were more intimate it wasn't it was physical but it was also like the reactions of things and how your emotions play into it and there was one time right before she ends up biting his lip that it got almost too magical and there was a tiny part of me that I'm like I mean it's great but it's not like groundbreaking but ultimately I really appreciate how she goes about showing love stories and how she goes about showing the beauty in romantic feelings and the physical forms of that. I think she does a nice job of making it beautiful and not 
just kind of explicit. In the end, despite not being sure how I was going to feel in a large portion of the book, I adored it. I think it sits in my mind in a different place than a lot of my other favorite books because of the fact that it's not about defeating the enemy in the traditional sense. It's not about destroying the person. It's about trying to help the person heal, whether they're your enemy or your ally. And I just don't find that very often in books. And I thought it was done so incredibly well. Let me know what your thoughts on this book were, whether you loved it or you hated it, or it also took you in a direction you weren't expecting, or if you somehow called the Nova storyline. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.